I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna show you how to do 3D text. It's very easy to make. I'll walk you through it step by step. Here's a couple examples of what you can do with it. Here's Iron Echo with a gold yellow gradient. Here's 3D text coming out from an angle. It's all done by using the interpolate feature. So the last video we did was on linear interpolation, and you can check that out if you want. If not, I'll show you a quick refresher, and we'll make this 3D text right now. If you want to play along, I am on the A4 template on the welcome screen. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. I don't actually use this canvas area, but it will give you the scale and proportion if you're trying to replicate this effect exactly. All right, so here's the quick refresher. Skip ahead to 3D text if you want just that, but this is how it works. Here is the most basic day one application. If I have a line here, or what's called a path, I'll hold shift and I'll collect another one, and you can tell Inkscape with Interpolate, I wanna make iterations of these in between the two of them. And it's done by doing extensions, generate from path, interpolate. You'll get this menu box, and then don't worry about all this stuff, just look at the number of interpolation steps. So we'll try 20, I'll do live preview, and there you go, so there's 20 steps in between the two, apply, close. So how does that apply to 3D text? Just like you can take one line and another line, you can take one block of text and another block of text and make steps in between the two. But there must be a way to then actually change the color as well, because I know I can make steps by using this, but how would the color work? Well, they have something for that. It's called interpolate style. So here is the example, so we can nail this home. Here is a yellow line, hold shift, red, extensions, generate from path, interpolate. Exact same settings, the only difference is we'll click on interpolate the style. So I want 20 versions, but I want to go from yellow to red. Live preview. And there you go, we've got a yellow to red gradient, pretty cool by itself like that. Click apply, and we'll use this now, except there's one more important factor. Get this out of here. So you need to remember this key and quirk, or the effect will not work. To make it function and to avoid frustration, remember the key, you have to take your text and first change it to a path. Path, object to path. That's the key. That's pretty common with Inkscape. There's a lot of things you can do that are under path effects. You have to turn things into a path. We all get that. But the quirk is it still won't work unless you then isolate each letter. So double click till I have just one then hold shift and get both. So now I've got both of them or as many letters as you have in your block of text. They're both selected. You have to go to path combine. All right, just a quirk, but then that makes it all that makes the magic happen. Okay, let's timestamp it right here. If you don't care about interpolation theory and you skipped ahead till now, welcome. I'll show you how to make the 3D text. Once you type out whatever you want to have the effect done on, you have to do the key we just learned, which is path object to path. Then from there, deselect everything, double click on the first character, and you have to isolate it. Hold shift and collect everything else in your block of text, path, combine. All right, now we're ready to go. We'll do control D, because I'm gonna make the two different paths now. I've got these color codes here if you wanna do the exact gradient we're about to do. I'll make this one, we'll go to eyedropper, I'll make it the dark one. I want to drop it to the bottom, so up here is hierarchy, throw it to the back. And basically what we're going to do, if just a refresher, if you skipped ahead, we're going to make the bottom one and the top one create a 3D block through interpolation. So you can have the 3D effect going this way, you can have it going this way, come from the top, from the bottom. Let's do shift and control and move it right about, I'm going to move it slightly off because the effect's going to look better if it's not right on top of each other. The more you play with it, the more you can kind of visualize what's gonna happen once you run the interpolation. Click off of everything. And the last step, it's pretty easy. I'll take the top one, Control D, which duplicates it. I'll set it aside. And we're gonna make this one almost white, right about there. Because once we have our 3D gradient block, it looks better when the face of your text is like a contrasting color. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna choose the bottom one first, the dark gray, hold Shift, Take the top one, then go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate. Let's bring the menu where you can see it and make sure the settings are correct. We need to interpolate style selected, which we have. That's gonna make the gradient. And for the steps, if I do 20, it'll make 20 iterations and be choppy. So I'm gonna go to 150 
And that's going to make it so many versions in between the two that it'll be almost like a solid block. Then click Live Preview. And there you go. Apply. Close. Here's why we put aside the white, because if you layer this right on top, you have got your 3D text with a nice solid gradient and a white face. You can even throw a linear gradient on top of this, like this, if you want to have a light source kind of reflecting off of it in whatever project you're doing. All right, let's do another one. We're going to up the ante now and do it with a curve here. So I have a green line at the bottom. I'll go to Edit Paths by Node and bring it up ever so slightly. One of the first tutorials I did on this channel was how to bend text around a circle. You can also bend text this way. So I've got the text selected, hold shift, I've got the curve, text, put on path, bring it back up. Now we can do the key and the quirk. So the key, path, object to path. I'll double click on one of the characters, then shift, collect all the pieces. From there, path, combine. We're ready to go to the next step, which is control D duplicates it. We'll make the top one this lighter color here. Then the bottom we can resize so we have the 3D perspective coming out. I'll grab the bottom one, shift, take the top one, extensions, generate from path, interpolate. Same settings as before. We'll do 150 steps and the interpolate style is selected. Live preview. Okay, so the gradient didn't come out the way I tested before I did this. I'm gonna leave this in the video to show you how to fix it. So if you're getting this, it'll still look okay, but it's not what I'm going for. I'll deselect out of everything. Sometimes you just have to change the color ever so slightly. So I'll go to a dark one. The top one, I'll go right about there. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or if it's the screen recorder that's slowing my computer down, but oftentimes if I don't get the gradient I want, I just change the colors in real time like that and do the same interpolate and it'll fix it. Let's try it. Yeah, there we go. So it worked that time. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm leaving it in because it might happen to you and I like to solve stuff in the comments. This way we know, hey, this does happen and especially if some of the Inkscape developers are watching, maybe they can correct me, maybe one of you can correct me, but um, that's what sometimes happens. So apply, close, and then the move I like to do is I grab one of the originals, so control D, just the top one, I'll make that super light, and I'll put it back. See how that makes it pop? I'll click in no man's land to grab everything. And look at all, that's all the iterations we made. Control G, we'll group it. Now we can move it onto, I thought I had a background here, and here it is, 3D text with Inkscape. Interesting that this was the first tutorial I've done where there was a real malfunction, but I wanna keep it in because I think that is the intention of these videos that I'm trying to do is show, this is how I'm doing it, this is how I enjoy playing with it, and then we can have dialogue in the comments. It could be on me, it could be something I missed. Um, I'm actually curious, if you did play along and you made it and it worked properly, let me know in the comments. If it's stuck and you keep getting that real solid gradient, just try that method I did, recolorize it, and see what happens. On to the next video.